Um, look at this. Yeah. As soon as I turn this route, Dad, you need to say it as quickly as possible. The four words. Okay? Right. I shit my steer elf. <laughs> Oh, shit, <laughs> oh, shit. We didn't swear that? to start the vlog. Use it on some of your friends. Oh. Uh. Team, you know what's keeping me occupied today and like out of pain a little bit? It's this little piece of paper. Ready? If I take a deep breath when I'm in pain. Oh, it's not doing it anymore. <laughs> uh. I'll tell you what, that was torture. I loved it. I feel it's like it's like good pain. You feel like looser, but yeah. <laughs> Violated. <laughs> We've had let that sink in and that will stay. But today for leaderboard day, we're bringing out the holy shit man. Should we get the step ladder out the back for you, Jess? No. First time in a coat this year, team. No, it's not the first time in a coat this year. Of course it isn't. First time in a coat this winter. I'm also wearing shorts. Should have finished. Leaderboard day is kind of like the test result day at school. But instead of having to ask your friends what did they get and they say three Ds, four E's, but I got I got a C. Hey, you don't even have to ask them, you can just look at the leaderboard. Are you top twenty in the world? Am I top twenty in the world? Yeah. No. Where did you come? Where did I come I don't know where I came in the world. He's a leaderboard, he only checks it at the end of end. He doesn't he doesn't check it till then. Oh, the end. I'm not checked. Sure. When the stress comes into your mind, that bad voice takes over, I think that's the only thing that I need to chase this year. Pretty cool. Sarah actually won the Open at right the start of this year. It's always cool when you come into the box and Kieran's bought a new TV and uh, you get to watch the games on it every day. It's just yeah. there in the background keeping you motivated. Extra inspiration. We have the new t-shirt up now. Yep. The Mayhem t-shirt signed by the Mayhem crew. It's Mayhem Plus, isn't it? Yeah, it's Mayhem Plus. The Shane Awesome. Anyway, before we look at the leaderboard today, team, uh, we're just going to do a workout. This is kind of my 20.1. <laughs> what is going on? I feel like I've just turned, I feel like I've just walked into a house party. American house parties always look so much better than the UK house parties. I don't know if it's just the movies, but wow, those red cups. Workout one, 100 double unders. 21, 15, 9, strict handstand push-ups, rest one-to-one, -one, repeat. Just doing things that we can do. My shoulders are on fire, that was great. Oh, my calves too. That second round, I started doubling her again and I was like, my arms aren't ready. I had five minutes rest. When I'm broken on all the handstand push-ups though, so that was, that's pretty good. Honestly, Timo, the last couple of uh, weeks of being injured, I hit the air bike so much that kind of, I'm not sick of air bike, but it was so nice to do something else. I'm also trying to rest more because I can't do as much stuff and I don't want to burn out, if that makes sense. You know, like I don't want to come in every single day and just end up hating the air bike. I'd rather come in maybe a little bit more rested than usual, allowing my body to kind of recover and do its thing. Basically what I'm trying to say is I'm not training as much at the moment, but when I am, I feel like I'm hitting it better because I'm actually like excited to train. You know, if I was coming in and doing air bike every day, like I, I was gonna train yesterday and then I was like, no, I don't wanna do air bike again. <laughs> Just getting that intensity in, rather than too much volume whilst I'm recovering. One small step for Jazz, another 400 small leaps for Jazz's double unders. <laughs> they look better today. <laughs> a bit better. It's still really difficult though. I just feel like exhausted after doing the theatre. I'm like, 
<laughs> it doesn't never get any easier. Point one over dance. And then uh, this is you in point two. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I've got to keep together because we're going to be with Annie and I've got to be like, oh yeah. yeah. Just drop that one there. <laughs> we're going to Iceland tomorrow, team, if you're watching this video today. We're going to go and uh, hang out and film Annie. Now, I know you've already noticed, team, because you're good at stuff like that. Yes, I've had a haircut. Now I know how Jeff feels. Hold on. Oh, blooming wheel. Off over. All right. How's it going, bro? Topping up my English for the day. Cup of tea. Had a cup and a chinwag with Will Kane. And before we get into these scores, here is a video that a lot of you, again, may relate to. It's Jessica Griffith. Four burpees into her last round. Legs not working. Body not working. Head probably not even functioning. <laughs> Holy shit, that sucks, man. Uh, it's another one. He's brought another one back. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel it. Elub Kipchoge, hold your hat. Majid Bulmain, finish this 20.1 workout with a time of 4.58. That's under 30 seconds a round. Back to 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 back. I wonder if you can actually do those two movements in 30 seconds. That guy's already been removed from the leaderboard as a look at it. Anyway, after week one, unfortunately Jazz isn't in the top 20 of the females. We are still holding out for a top 20 place. There was one person in the whole entire world that went sub eight minutes on this workout. And they didn't just go sub eight minutes by a couple of seconds, they went sub eight minutes by 19 seconds. Irish Games athlete Emma McQuaid finished this first workout in seven minutes and 41 seconds. She listened to some absolute bangers throughout it. Bit of Darude Sandstorm. And when she finished, I don't know if CrossFit is a good preparation for childbirth, but she sounded like she seemed to be in as much pain. <laughs> Sam Briggs actually redid the workout as well. She finished second worldwide, the engine from England, eight minutes and one. The winner of the Open earlier in the year, Sarah Sigma's daughter, who went against Annie Thorostar, eight minutes and 11. Carrie Pierce, 8.20. Annie Thorostar repeated and went 8.25, 20 seconds quicker. This year's CrossFit Games champ, Tia Claire Toomey, went 8.34. But one of the most impressive performances for me out of the female side of this first open workout is Cara Saunders. She is now four and a half months post-pregnancy. She finished 26th in the world with a time of eight minutes and 58 seconds. <laughs> Then looking at the male side of the leaderboard, I don't know how you say his name. Unofficially right now taking the first place in 20.1, we have Lefteris Theophanidis from Greece with a time of 8.05. If you watch his video, he has some sort of rhythm with his burpees, which is kind of strange, but um, it seems to work for him. Will we see more people do burpees like this in the future? It's kind of like a hip hop and then a stand up. Next. Next. Stop. A couple of names that obviously we all know about. We saw Gummonson end himself in this workout and get carried out. He finished third in the world with the time at 8.16. The one that everyone has their eyes on throughout any open or game season, Matt Fraser. And it's great. Taking the earlier open, finishing the time of 8.28, giving him ninth place. Chandler Smith tied with Patrick Vauner with a time of 8.38, giving him both 13th. One of our favorites here at the channel, Noah Olsen, he finished 27th. If you followed him earlier in the season, his open ended after point one pretty much when he got a score of 800th in 20.1, basically meaning he couldn't qualify for the open because he had too many points already. This time round, that hasn't happened, although he did do the workout twice and got exactly the same score, completely different states. And then one name that I want to pick up on this side of the male leaderboard is a good friend of mine, Zach George. 
He finished 29th worldwide with a time of 8.55. He's a big dude. One of the things with this workout that I actually have observed is that the top of the leaderboard, I thought would see a lot more smaller dudes who theoretically should be able to shift on the burpees and make up a lot of time because this is 100 bar face and burpees. But what we found with this and what I've heard from a couple of people is that barbell towards the later rounds gets heavy. So Dave Castro, well programmed workout. He also explained why he programmed this workout, Dave Castro here, give it a listen. When I first tested it a few months ago, it was eight and 10 for 12 minutes. And then I decided to have someone else test it at 10 and 10 for, um, for 15 minutes and their feedback was uh, that they might have used more clean and jerk, I'm sorry, more snatch and clean and jerk. And this was a really good athlete who was able to go fast. And the intention of the two different movements was uh, to have the fastest guys have to snatch it to have the best time. But anyway, what does this all mean? It means obviously the people that are first in the leaderboard right now are gonna be first after five weeks. It's that obvious. I've actually just seen an interesting article from the Barbell Spin. They've done kind of a breakdown of a couple of athletes that you may have expected to see towards the top of the leaderboard, but we haven't this week. But before that, there was a paragraph that said this. Last year, the 31st man and the 38th woman in the world qualified via the top 20 route. Tim Paulson, 31st, last year finished with 501 points, basically 100 points per workout. It was a little easier on the woman's side as Cheryl Nasso, 38th, finished with 733 points or 146 points per workout. So just bear that in mind to qualify for the last year's games out of the top 20 open, 500 points for the men, 733 points for the women as kind of like a cutoff. Looking on the male side, Saxon Panchik, Will Morad, Jason Carroll, Lucas Estengler, Ben Smith, George Sterner, all around that 100 to 160 points. It's nothing major, but um, it's not a good start. Bit further down the leaderboard, James Newbury, 242nd, even with a sub 10 time. Dan Bailey, Ryan Souder, Joshua Wistrup, Elijah Muhammad, all in that kind of 300s region, which is a lot of points to have early on, but it still means you can qualify with a good couple of finishes throughout the next workouts. And then Big Bron that we know who lifts the insane weights, who's actually be recently been on the cover of Men's Health magazine, Lucas Parker and Cody Anderson all finishing around, all finishing around 400, 500th place, which means that probably their top 20 dream may be out the window, but looking at national champ, it may still be on the cards. On the women's side, Amanda Barnhart, on that cusp, she's 100th, it's nothing major. Maddie Sturt, Col Colleen Foch, Danielle Brandon, all around that 150th in the world. This year's sixth fittest on earth, Hayley Adams, 215th in the world. Guilford Daughter, 230th. Again, those two, nothing too major. It is a lot of points to get out of workout one, but if they can hold themselves in the next four workouts and finish in that top 50 region, then it shouldn't seem to be a problem. But it's just something to keep an eye out on in the future weeks. One person I forgot to talk about was uh, Brent Fikowski. He hasn't had his score verified yet. People do have until Wednesday night, I believe, to verify the scores. So we're waiting to see where he placed. But, that, but yeah, that is me done talking about week one. Some bar facing burpee bullshit, some crown to overhead bullshit, and uh, 10 rounds of bullshit. Can't wait to see what bullshit turns up this week. I'm honestly hoping for strict handstand push ups and double unders. Then I can do it. But week two usually then involves a pull up bar. I think we'll probably see something along the lines of toaster bar. I'm still waiting for a Dave Castro clue. But until then, I won't make a formal guess unless it does get to Thursday night. And then I'll be like, okay, here's my guess. But yeah. Thank you for tuning in on today's video. As always, again, smash that like button. Tell everyone about this uh, this show that you watch on YouTube where the dad is a savage. There's a girl with an incredible smile and there's a guy that's super annoying until they get sick of it and uh, give in and watch the channel. And even if they don't enjoy it at first, just carry on going and then eventually they'll just keep watching. Thank you for joining us and uh, we'll catch you in the next one from Iceland. Can't wait. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.